Greetings. Um, my name is Clinton Hutton, and um, I'm going to be speaking to Dr. Dave Goss. Good morning, Dave. Yes, good morning, Clinton. How are you doing? I am good, my brethren. Yes, man. Yeah, Glad to talk to you today. Yes, my this pleasure. man is the head of the Institute for studying Charging cultural Charging. studies Charging. across yes. the Caribbean, the University of the West Indies, Mona. And um, he has written a book. Well, it's not his first book anyway, but he has written another book. Um, this one is on Alexander Bedward, Race, Religion, and Colonialism. I might say, um, Dr. Goss has hit upon a topic that I have deep, deep, and um, it's the first full-length book on Alexander Bedward. Alexander Bedward is arguably one of the most important anti-colonial champion coming out of the late 19th century into the first two decades of the 20th century. In, in fact, in the pantheon of Pan-Africa, of, of, um, of anti-colonial leaders in Jamaica, in fact, he himself said that he has taken up the mantle of the Morant Bay War. Uh, so, as a person who has written on, on the Morant Bay uprising, and I've actually mentioned uh, in a few pages, Alexander Bedward, and I am very glad to see a full length book out on Bedward. Bedward is arguably the most prominent leader of the revival movement in Jamaica, without a doubt. And um, I'm going to interview Dave about this book. And congratulations, man. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, tell me something. Yes. What yes. is meant by Bedward's manifestation? What, do you, what is meant by that? That's a very interesting question, um, um, Clinton. Um, and by the way, um, today, today, April 27th, is the day um, in which Bedouard declared that he was manifest, manifesting himself and his presence um, downtown, a march, a march from August Town, um, headed um, to downtown Kingston. So the manifestation, um, Clinton, uh, can be seen in, uh, in, in about two ways. First, I would, I would make the point that this was Bedward's declaration of war, right? Something that, that had started some time ago. You could argue that this is where the black wall, right, is now circling the white wall, which is a very prominent, um, you know, quote um, by, by Bedward. So this one, and if you study the, the context leading to this manifestation, when the government heard that he was about to march, they sent a policeman to tell him, don't march. And Bedward said, you can't tell me what I feel divinely led to do. I must march. It is my destiny to march, right? Then he informed his followers, he said to them, look here, in a don't come, right? Don't come because with the war and the colonial government, right? And so um, the march had the Bedouinites um, in their white, you know, with their palm branches singing, you know, onward Christian soldiers going off to war, 
right? So he's a decoration of one colonial state. And that's how the government ensured that they stopped him. <laughs> Make sure they stopped him. Um, and I think Bedouin knew that 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 would happen. One thing that I find very interesting is that he somehow copied his life of what they call the historical white Jesus and, 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 um, and the kind of suffering. So you see this kind of triumphal, triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem <laughs> that they were the palm branches. It reminds me that manifestation is, is, is that, you know, where he knows that he's going to be crucified, right? We're going to take on the state anyhow, right? And the consequences, you don't care anymore about the consequences. Kill me if you want, it's my crucifixion. But unless you die, you can't get the crown. And what is interesting about Bedouinism, that this, the, the symbol of Bedouinism, you see, um, Clinton, was that a cross embedded in a crown. You can't get the crown if you don't go through the cross. So, so the manifestation, in a sense, is Bedouin's declaration of war on the colonial state, right? That yeah. I am not easing up. This is where the black wall is not being manifested, um, you know, over the white wall. And I guess to arouse the interest of Jamaicans that we are here. You know, we're not going anywhere, right? And the kingdom, the colonial kingdom must come to an end. And I am going to try to find a way to trigger that kind of demise of the colonial state. Great. All right. All right. So now tell me a little about Bedward and, um, and why did you write a book on him? Well, let me start first by talking about um, why I wrote the, this book on, on Bedward. Uh, before, before, well, I was doing research in, um, in England, you know, that historian, we go to the public record office in Kew Gardens and we do research there. And on two occasions, I was there doing research. And the first time I found a, a document, a misplaced document, I should say, shouldn't be there, but a document prescribing or describing all the chapters of Bed, of Bedward in 1921. And when I started, I said, my God, before this, the only person I knew who wrote about Bedward was Professor Veron Sachel. And so when I looked at the thing, I said, why mm -hmm. Sachel would have done something that the, the length and breadth of this man's influence? It was about, um, and that part uh, is a part of the book, that, uh, apparently, but it showed the leaders of the chapters all across the island, right? And I saw it, I said, my God, this man was amazing. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that this thing was so wide and expansive. So it, it brought, it brings it back to the, 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 the writing of, of, um, of, of Professor Sachel. The second time I went back to the archive now, then I, I saw now the child notes, right? The child notes in 1895 when he was accused of sedition. And I started to read it and I said, but my God, this man was really set up. You know, so from that then I said, you know what, boy, I have to write something on Bedward. So that is how it started, and ho hopefully a, a fuller length um, manuscript than what Veron, uh, Professor Satchel wrote, and a few other persons wrote, but something fuller. So that was the interest, because I, I really realized the, the magnitude of this man. I didn't understand the magnitude of the man until I saw the documents, until I saw the colonial state. Then I saw colonial correspondence now, where, where uh, um, the, the, the colonial people in England Ask for an investigation of this man. <laughs> no, you must be a most dangerous, a most dangerous man for the for the authorities in England to ask the governor here. We want a report on this man. Who is this man? <laughs> and the governor sent a report, you know, about the man and said, "Well, well you know, he not he don't really trust and all that as people claim." And you know, so it was it, it really piqued my interest. And I said, but all that guy called me and said, come write up, not me, man. I need to, I need to kind of uh, let people know who I really am. So do, that was the motivation for writing the book. Now, who was Bedward then? And why is it important then? As you said in your, your introduction then, Bedward must be considered one of Jamaica's premier prophets and someone who has been um, deregulated to, to comedy. So all the Jamaicans, when you ask about, mention Alexander Bedward, the first thing you do is what? You laugh and say the man who wanted to fly. Because that was exactly what they wanted us to know about Alexander Bedward, to reduce him, you know, to some mere madman, right? So, so that was one of the reasons um, for writing. But the second important reason then, that here's a man who for 30, over 30 years 
for the colonial system and succeeded. He was public enemy number one. Here's a man now who, if you, if you call a, if you think about a relay, for example, a button change from Paul Bogle to, to Bedward, right? Down to Marcus Garvey and then to Rastafari. That man, that he held that button, the button for over 30 odd years, right? So, so two Bedward now then, the black nationalism, Ethiopianism, right, was nurtured, handed over now to Marcus Garvey and then to um, Rastafari um, and others. So it's an important black prophet, a nationalist prophet that should not be reduced to mere com comedy. And, um, and although the folk songs um, really immortalize him, because that's what the folk songs do, that immortalize Bedward as a, as a, as a bad man, a man, a, a, a daring man. So I have found in, in my research then, uh, Alton Bedward was not a madman. He was a most brilliant um, leader, very strategic. If you read the way how Bedward um, positioned Bedwardism in contrast to revivalism, although he's still revival, it's amazing, right? Because if you, if you look at what Bedward, Bedward is, Bedwardism was supposed to be um, the, the reinterpretation of both Judaism and Christianity. Right, that led to Bedouinism as the final, <laughs> the final Afro-Jamaican religion. So, in a sense, what he, what he has done is he has created a Jamaican religion, right? Um, in which you now a black Jesus is relevant, in contrast to a white Jesus, right? Um, and they nurture the seed of Ethiopianism, right? And 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 black people at that time. Bedward was their hero, he's their anti-colonial champion. Um, wrote about Bedward. Anybody have anybody wrote about Bedward? So, so, so Bedward was someone who it was quite clear um, that the colonial state saw him as public enemy number one who would destroy the colonial state. And, and, and to even say that, the fear was not even better himself, but his power among the masses. That he was so powerful among the masses, so influential among the masses, that they feared that this man must be contained and controlled. Otherwise, um, the people could have turned out and, and reorganized. So, better is a, 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 a spiritual movement, but with social and political implications and nationalistic implications, right? Um, so he was the hope for black people, working class black people, who had, as Bedard argued, the prophets, the preachers, and the, and the healers are charging for money. People don't have money at that stage. Right? So he provided the alternative. Come to, come to me. I will, I can, Jesus made, turn water into wine. I turn water into medicine. So I have medicine for the people. They have spiritual medicine for the people. Then now we together now will fight the colonial system and bring it to its knees. You know, so Bedwell is a significant national that every Jamaican needs to be aware of and have more respect for the, his contribution um, to our own development at this time. Precisely, precisely. In fact, you know, um, talking about Bedwell being a madman is um, his chapel. The ruins yes. of his chapel, which I have been to several times, is magnificent, even in ruins. Magnificent. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. And of course, yes. his, his, his tomb is still down there alongside his wives. Yes. And, um, and so it's, it's a very important historical site. Um, yes. The other thing is that in the arrest of the, the premier founder of the Rastafari movement, Leonard yeah. Percival Howell. There is discussion prior to his arrest as to how to put him into what they call then the lunatic asylum, yes. Bellevue. Yes. yes. It was a strategy of the British yes. to put yes. anti-colonial leaders to yes. reduce 
them to mad people. Yes, yes, yes. People. Yes. Yes. They did two to them. Yes. You know? I, yeah, you, you're correct no. on that point. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm saying you're correct on that point, you know, because um, it, yes. it, 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 progression, it, that progression of, um, of our anti-colonial leaders, right, who are actually imprisoned. And let me tell you what, what and I've discussed it in the book, by the way, now. When, when he was charged for Sedition in 1895 and he got, he got off this, the case of Sedition, right? The, the Jamaican state strengthened, <laughs> right? Strengthened the laws, all of the laws, the Obia Act, right? Um, the one to do with the Medical Act, right? They strengthened the laws and even the, the law for, they do that thing called criminal lunatic. You can't catch him. You can't. You can't catch him that way. You're catching by the criminals. What they did? They criminalize lunacy. And let me tell you, if you look at the figures, and I just I showed in the book, after 1895, the figures going to the asylum increase by about 300 percent for the next 20 odd years <laughs> because they said we can't <laughs> catch you one way. We're going to catch you the other way. So 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 not only Bedward, but Bedward, Howell. Hines, a number of them were targeted. Um, the, yes. the, 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 I'm forgetting the name of the of the, the Rasta um, elder, um, Claudius Henry, right? Uh, most of those guys, yes. they are targeted. Yes. So, and it is, and, and in the literature, by the way, support the point that, that the asylum lunacy was one cunning way of the British government to silence its, the, 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 the anti-colonial people. That's one way. But I put a spin in the book about this age of madness, though. Mm -hmm. You see? So if Bedward is mad, right, I put another spin to it to say, to make the point that, look here, no man, the man is, the man is mad enough, yes, to take out the colonial state. <laughs> if that's what you mean, is mad is mad in that sense, setting, because if the way how he strategized, right, it was quite clear that he was afraid that none of them, and in some of his meetings, he said, in some of his meetings, he said, look here, no man, the police, when they say, arrest me, they're going to bad. Arrest me, they're going to bad, right? He deliberately provoked them. <laughs> and this manifestation, by the way, right, is a way in which it's the final provocation of the state to say, look here, I am Alexander Bedward. I am, you know who I am? I am, right, I am the Black Christ. Okay, crucify me, you want to crucify but, but So in that case, he's mad in that sense to take on the colonial state and to take on the whole colonial, colonial yeah. apparatus, right? But he was not physically mad. When you yeah. study Alexander Bedward, it is a smart, strategic leader and organizer, right? The man was so smart and cunning that he knew how to even position the movement to, in a sense, be tied to revivalists, yes. But in a sense, be a little different from, from revivalism. And although he's feeding from other revivalists, he's a little distinct from other revivalists. And he knows how to build a community of saints. And I argue in the book, by the way, mm -hmm. um, that even Leonard P. Howell, I, I argue, somehow now um, would have been um, influenced somehow by Bedward's successful um, community of saints. As Professor Satchel argues in his work, that there's no other church, no other movement in the British Caribbean that had a community of believers organized as Bedward had. Anybody who hungry, anybody who need anything, the Bedward community provided for every single, and even the, the critics of Bedward admitted that the man had anything he wanted, he can provide you. <laughs> How could an ordinary madman, right, be so strategic that, that he, he could work things out financially economically get houses built for people provide right over about 800 or nearly a thousand people he had provided housing for them in august town this is a man who who, who the very development of august town was due to bed one first as a religious town as a mecca the new jerusalem the man is not a madman is a smart a smart jamaican of course a jamaican who could hardly could hardly read and write you know but but that doesn't mean that you know, intelligent, the man was highly intelligent and strategic. 
Yeah. He was not a bad man. Yeah. Right? Not a bad yeah. man. And, yes. And in fact, you know, the, 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 the thing you raise about, about the British and the madness, they were trying one of his one of his supporters at the hour yes. of a tree. Court. Court house. Yes. And the judge sent him for a psychiatric because he referred British racism yes. and British yes. aristocracy yes. by saying, This is my lord. I know yes. black people can re refer to their leader as my lord. Yes. My lord is yes. King George. How dare yes. you? <laughs> yes. That's the thing. Yes. But it was really yes. subverting. It was subverting yes. the British philosophical discourse yes. about yes. superiority yes. and inferiority. Yes. This yes. was quite a bright yes. man. So what is, it, what is yes. the main message of your book then? Well, you have been telling yes. us some of that. Tell us more. Yes. Yeah, the, the main message of the book um, is that Alexander Bedward must be respected as one of Jamaica's great um, prophets, right? I mean, he must, be, he must be put on a similar pedestal. I'm not saying that he's a national hero. I'm not going in that direction. But I'm just saying that when you think about Paul Bogle and Sam Sharp, Bedward is up there with them. As a matter of fact, one, one guy, one, man, one white man wrote, um, he came downtown and saw an inscription on the wall. An inscription says something like, um, Jamaica had two prophets, right? One is Alexander Bedward, second is Mar Marcus Garvey. So the even other man at the time um, wow. I knew where Bedward fell in terms of honor and respect. So the book then is making the point then that this idea of comedy, um, you know, comic, comic relief, it's something now that we have to get over that, you know, that Bedward is a significant black nationalist, as recognized, by the way, in, in, in even Rastafari music and, um, you know, even Rastafari language and other things. He's recognized the ordinary Jamaican must understand yes. that this man was no madman. And as this man was, yes. a, if, you want to, if you want to think about a leader, a black leader in a colonial time, if you want to see a model of a black leader in a colonial time, Alexander Bedward was that leader. A man who was being illiterate yes. in, our, in our part of jargon, but a man who was smart, a man who outsmarted. As a matter of fact, he was so respected that the British knew that don't go trouble him, don't go trouble him up at uh, Augustown, leave him alone up there, right? <laughs> the man is so influential, right? Leave him alone up there. We, we, we can't bother with it because the man was so powerful enough that he could ignite a revolution in the country. They have, we have to respect him. So he's a significant black nationalist now that Jamaicans must embrace, right, yes. and respect, you know. Um, and so we want to reduce him, take him out of this kind of um, 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 rubbish heap um, where people play and place him as some kind of um, comical, uh, where you want to laugh, you talk about Bedward flying, right? The people at this time recognize him and immortalize him. And they'll have to listen to learn, even about language, even about religion, even more black power. <laughs> That's what he like black power <laughs> in a time of white power. Bedward um, was a symbol of um, Bedouinism of black power. And the fact that black men, black people, right, could achieve whatever they, whatever they wanted because their God saw their oppression and their God um, had a way to deliver them. So he's a symbol, right, of, of Africanness. And a lot of our African um, traditions that we are proud of now is Bedward was a part of that why today <laughs> we can, you know, can celebrate our blackness, <laughs> right? And the in, man who passed the matter in hand. Yes, in fact, you know, Marcus Garvey said, what was Mar Marcus Garvey was so impressed by Bedward's ability yes. to mobilize thousands of people. people. Yes. That is what influenced Marcus Garvey's Yes. Global mobilization yes. within the context of the UNIA. That's yes. where it is coming from. Yes. yes. It's Bedward's influence to mobilize yes. thousands yes. Yes. that influenced Marcus Garvey. 
to yeah. deal with to, to to set up the UNIA in yeah. order to mobilize thousands of people all over the place. Yes. So yes. so in the so Bedward is very very important in our yes. genealogical history. Right, right. And that was also many points as well, Clinton. Two other things here now just talk about that um thing that um and I don't want to give away you know too much of everything in the book. Sure, yet, but sure, there is a sure. point in which in which the Bedwardites claim that they were ordered by Bedward to pray for Marcus Garvey. Can Marcus Garvey, if 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 people don't pray for Garvey to succeed, he going to die, <laughs> right? Because of the weight of the colonial system and him. That's one. Yeah. The, the second thing also, um, you know, need, need to as you talk about, and I think I can forget my second point in there, but well, let me just hold on to that part of the point about the importance of Bedward. Oh, the other thing I was saying you know, also, Clinton, is that the revivalist tradition today, right, is largely successful, right, and peaceful today because of Bedward. Yes. Right? Because what Bedward did, um, Bedward somehow gave them strength, right? And the colonial government wants to find a way to get rid of every single revivalist anywhere they could be found. <laughs> okay. And, and you could see an arrogance, for example, there's a kind of arrogance uh, and badness and badness that these leaders had that somehow influenced other revivalist leaders. So you see, people are copying Bedward. <laughs> right. Somehow Bedward's strength in, in, in challenging the colonial Absolutely. system. Right. It's giving strength to other, to other better to other revivalist leaders who are trying to copy. There's one part of the person, Brother Sal, out of West Kingston, who, who people ascribe was the next second to Bedward in terms of like um, his influence. <laughs> when you read what Brother Sal, Brother Sal, <laughs> they, they, they were emboldened. So the revivalist tradition today, right, um, is, is successful today because people like Bedward fought to make it successful. To make it possible, right? Otherwise, the colonial government now would have probably clamped down more significantly on the whole revivalist tradition. So revivalists today must also give credit to Bedward, right? Because Bedward straightened them and Bedward showed it is possible, right, to go against the grain, to go against the colonialists and survive. And that's what he did. You know, so it's a significant Jamaican um that as we celebrate now coming to our 60th um anniversary, you know, we we need to pay respect and and, and that's why the launch is the soft launch is even due today out of respect for this man who led over 600 people um um on a morning like this marching from august town down to downtown to tell jamaica that we are here we're not going nowhere and black man kingdom is coming we honor him and respect him um for you know his 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 contribution um you know in our in our lives sorry one of the most important changes that bedwood had to to significant influence of bedwood and revival is the is the is the attention that revival has played paid to um the issue of healing and water yes it became yes. central yes. even now and i have yes. done i have done 20 odd years of study of revival and yes. the, 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 the 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 tradition of healing and water yes. is central throughout jamaica in yes. revival now and the yes. symbols are seen everywhere in revival right now yes. and that but, is due to bedwood but, but not only that not only revival is no um, and, and again i don't want to give away too much of the book but let me tell you even the christian influence of baptizing in the river <laughs> right okay mm -hmm. baptizing in, in water baptism right so, right is, is is part of that and even the idea and the healing healing especially the Pentecostal um, kind of, of churches, no healing is significant. It traces back, and I've, I've made a connection also in the book um, that, that not only revivalists now, um, um, that even Christian tradition, you know? And, and, and even at that point, I need to also highlight as well why he's also significant. If you contrast Bedward with, say, the native Baptists who, who 
were here prior to Bedward. The, the Baptists generally you now have become um, um, far more um, syncretic with Christian, traditional Christian symbols and all of that. Um, so, so Bedward, in a sense, when it comes to religion, um, the Native Baptists, of course, um, they, are no, they, are, they are plentiful, but not as plentiful as the Bedwardites. So the largest religious Black movement in Jamaica is that the Native Baptists, you know, is the Bedwardites, <laughs> right? The Bedwardites have replaced the Native Baptists in that sense, right? In terms of like strength and numbers and influence. So that this, so this, this man, this movement is no ordinary movement in it. It's a significant movement in our national yeah. history that we need Absolutely. to be cognizant of. Yes. So, so that's the important point that needs to be made. Yeah, yeah. and when, when he passed away in, in 1930, I think yes. it's November 8th, thereabouts. Yes. yes, It was yes. during the process, the, the, yes. the coronation process of His Majesty yes. began in November 2. Yes, and, and it yes, continues yes. up into November 8th. So he died during that time. The yes, other side yes. of that, yes, which, yes, which yes. propelled the, the development of the Rastafari movement. Yes, but not yes. a, what, what was central about that is that the first core of the Rastafari movement yes, was made up yes. of Bedwardites. Yes, 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 right. yes, yes, yes. No, and then no. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, Tina. yes, yes. And I was saying, and then you go now to Robert Come on, Hines. I'm done. You go to Robert I'm Hines next. Done. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I was, was one of the leaders in the church. Yes. Yes, yes. And, and Hines, Hines is significant, it's very significant now. And I, and I actually made a point. Um, did a very interesting, again, I don't want to give away too much again in the book again, but did an interesting dialogue when Heinz is charged for sedition, um, the people are saying, the government is saying that it is Leonard P. Hoyle who, who influenced you with this kind of badness. And he said, no, no, man. I, I came to this realization that Selassie is God, you know, because right. of my yes. training, in my better life training. <laughs> they, they yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, because, because, in fact, <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yes. So, yes. So, so in fact, yes, we the could fly. It's Bedwardism. Bedwardism yes, is, a, yes. is a very important root of Rastafari. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 Man, yeah, man, I really yes. thank you for writing this book, my brother. Yes. Thank and, you. Uh, and 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 it it will become part of the literature yes. of our redemption. Yes. Because yes. We, we need it for ourselves and for our children and our children's children. It is part yes. of, of, of weaving our, our, yes. our narrative of being and our yes. journey of becoming yes. and our redemption. Yes. That is why it's so important to write about these figures yes. in our history. Yes. yes. Very, very important. Yes. And um, I thank you. This is Dr. Dave Goss from the ICS, Institute of Caribbean Studies, University of the West Indies, the author of a new book, Alexander Bedward, The Prophet of Augustown, Race, Religion, and Colonialism. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Clinton. And thank you for all your assistance, um, encouragement, um, even the picture, all right? Thank you for all of that, all right? And um, thank you for all the strength that you gave me during the process. Yes, man. Blessings. All right. All right. Take care. God bless. Good, good. Right. Yeah, man.